Good morning and welcome to Park Road Baptist Church. We are glad to see you today. Um, I know that this is CMS spring break because they never get the memo about Holy Week. Um, and so it's, I know that a lot of people are, visit, are, are vacationing today, but um, it is good to be together. Uh, for those of you that are with us in the room and for those that are joining us uh, live streaming. Let me mention just a couple of things to you before we get started. Um, we will not have anything this Wednesday night, No, nothing in person and nothing online, because on Thursday we will have our Maundy Thursday communion service. We will have supper at 5.30, and if you want to come to supper, I need to know about that because I'm cooking. So there are sign-up sheets in, the, in Health Hall. You can call the church office. You can text me. You can email me. You can see me today and just tell me. But don't tell me unless you see me write it down because I will not remember. Uh, but please sign up and join us for supper at 5.30, and then at 6 o'clock we'll be in Milford Chapel for our Maundy Thursday communion service. And then next Sunday is Easter Sunday, and there's still time to get Easter lilies if you want to sign up to have an Easter, lily, an Easter lily given in memory of or in honor of someone. There's sign-up sheets in Hell Hall, or you can call the church office this week and let us know. We will print that in next week's bulletin, and then the lilies will cover the cross next Sunday. And then afterwards, there's an Easter egg hunt, so bring your baskets if you don't have baskets, we'll have Harris Teeter bags for you, and uh, eggs will be hidden, and you can immediately following worship find the candy-filled filled eggs next Sunday. And that's all I'm going to tell you about. It's just this week and next Sunday, there's a lot more going on in the life of the church. I hope you're reading the newsletter. Go online, go to the website, check out all the things that are happening for children, for youth, in mission, in ministry and find your way to plug in and get involved. But for now, take that deep breath and come into this room on this Palm Sunday morning that begins a holy week of reflection, contemplation, uh, the troubles and the travails, and then looking forward to resurrection good news next week. So let us worship God together in spirit and in truth.
Will you read with me the litany of worship? Just to be clear, the biblical references are just that. You don't need to read that, just the bold words. Much of faith is in remembering. So let us remember the words spoken in the past. Remember the Sabbath day. Remember that you were slaves in Egypt. Remember the wonderful works God has done. Remember your Creator in the days of your youth. Remember the poor. Remember those in prison. Remember that we were at one time without Christ. Remember, Jesus said, I am with you always. Remember me, said the thief on the cross, when you come into your kingdom. Today, as we reflect on the events of that final week, let us remember what we received and heard. Hosanna. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Let us pray. Lord, in this season, we try to remember the words and actions of you and your son, Jesus Christ. It can be difficult, difficult, Lord, in that the words and mores of the Bible are so foreign to our modern society. The writing can be strange and cryptic to us, everyday folk, and often requires interpretation by those who have made a life from the word. It's part of why we come here to Park Road every week, or so, to hear your word in our language. What I believe we do understand are the actions of your son, our ultimate interpreter of your word. In this place, we believe your way is to look inward but act outward. We think that contributing to our community not only helps those in need, but demonstrates your word to the world around us. We know that it helps us feel closer to you. As we remember and relate the acts of thousands of years ago, we hope that our emulating Jesus Christ will be remembered by our children, our grandchildren, and our associates. I remember well the act, kind acts of my parents and grandparents as they tried to walk the path even these many years later. I am inspired by my friends here at Park Road Baptist to do good. Give us the strength of our convictions to help to keep all of your stories alive and relevant and to create properly our own stories for future generations. Help us to understand your teachings as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. I'm a golfer, so I've been watching the Masters, and those guys really are good. They hit a lot of tremendous shots, but every once in a while, you'll see one who hits a drive to the right or yanks it to the left, or they sometimes hit it into Ray's Creek, or occasionally even miss a three-foot putt. And when they do those things, I think, I can do that. <laughs> but usually, when I do those kinds of things on the golf course, it's accompanied by a lot of really negative self-talk. You know, I hit a bad shot, and I think, how can I be so awful at this game? Or, gosh, I really stink. And that kind of negative self-talk, I think, spills over for all of us, golfers or not, into different areas of our lives. 
you know, sometimes it's, I am so fat, or I am so out of shape, or why can't I be more patient? And we all have those sort of negative self-talk tapes that run from time to time. And as we enter this Holy Week, for me, I think what is really important is to remember that if Holy Week demonstrates anything, it demonstrates how much God loves you, that you are a beloved child of God. And so as we go into this time of reflection and silence, I invite you to let go of some of those negative tapes and welcome the love of God into your heart. Let us keep silence together. And now would you say with me the words of our prayer of confession. Gracious and merciful God, remind us that we are loved when we find ourselves unlovable. Remind us that there is hope when all we see around us makes us despair. Remind us that you are the merciful judge when injustice seems to prevail. Remind us that you give us all we need to do your work in the world. Remind us that you give us grace so that we can be your people. We confess our doubt and trust in your love. Help us to grow more and more into Christ's likeness that we may bear his love and truth to the world. In the name of Jesus, who brought us closer to you, we pray. Amen. You are God's beloved child. You are loved and you are forgiven. So be at peace. And Jesus said, Let the little children come unto me, and do not hinder them, for to such as these belong the children of God. Little ones, come unto me. Holy, holy, holy Lord. Have you ever felt so happy that you just couldn't help but sing? Has anybody ever felt that way? No? 
No, oh, Ellie, no, no. I'm just a dour child, as we all know. Yeah. No, never, never. I've never seen her not smiling. It's the real, the real thing. Uh, <laughs> so maybe you're just always happy. Is that the, is that the problem? Okay, okay. Too happy, too happy a child. Catherine, get on that. Um, no, just kidding. Uh, <laughs> anybody else feel so happy that you just can't help but sing? Mm-hmm. Yeah? When, when do you feel that way? Um, when I go to happy weddings. When you go to happy weddings. Very good. Miller? Um, if, like, I get something that I've really been wanting for a long time. Yeah, when you get something you really want. Olivia? Um, I, I, I went to... To a wedding. I went to a wedding too, and I got to see a flower girl. Ooh, very good. Oh, very good. They they did a fantastic job being palm palm frond bearers today, didn't they? Even very good. Even yeah. Even if Micah went way too early, right? Sometimes sometimes Micahs make mistakes, right? And maybe other people make mistakes too. Well. When I was thinking about times that I have wanted to just burst out in song, I was thinking about three times in particular. There was one time when I was sitting inside my church in Scotland, in Aberdeen, Scotland, where my wife and I lived for a, for a little while, and in that church, there were all sorts of families. There were people who looked like us, who had white skin, and there were families from Ghana in Africa who had very dark skin, and they wore v- so such colorful clothes, and they would get up during the service sometimes, and they would dance down to the songs. And that, to me, made me think of today. And some of the songs that they would sing are, O flower of Scotland, when will we see ye rise again? And every time I think about those, those people, I want to sing that song too. And then the other day I was thinking about a couple of years ago when everybody in Charlotte, it seemed like everybody in Charlotte, got up together to say, we care about our black brothers and sisters, and we're going to stand up and say Black Lives Matter. And so we went out and we sang, Lean on me when you're not strong, I'll be your friend. I'll help you carry on. And every time I hear that song, it makes me remember that time when we loved each other so well. And every time that I get to sing, You are my sunshine, my only sunshine, I think about how much I love my son Walter. And songs, when we, when we feel those things, we can just burst out in song, right? And when we hear this story today, that's exactly what the people were feeling when they saw Jesus. They were as happy as they were when you guys were at the wedding. Can you believe that? They were so happy because Jesus was coming on a donkey to remind them that God loves them. And God loves you. And so we're going to sing a song. We're gonna, a friend of mine wrote this song and, and turned these words that they sing in our gospel lesson into a song. And I'm going to sing it first, and then Annabelle and Ellie know the words because they were in Sunday school with us. But Olivia and Miller, you guys can help us. If you remember the words, you can sing them. And anybody else who remembers the words can sing them. And we're going to, ra- we're going to wave our palm fronds. Okay? And we're going to think about how much... You had four palm fronds? Yes, very good. <laughs> Yeah, you did. Every, uh, I don't know if everybody's going to get four this time. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> and we're going to think about how much everyone was so excited because Jesus was telling them God loves them. So let's go ahead. I'll stand up. Oh, holy, holy, holy Lord. God of power and God of might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna, Hosanna, bless
Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Holy, holy, holy Lord. Holy, holy, holy Lord. Can y'all sing that with me? Can y'all sing it with me? You can, you can sing the Hosanna part, right? Can I get an amen? amen? All right. That was the weirdest amen I've ever heard out of a Baptist church. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and God of might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest, holy, holy, are lots of ways that we can tell Jesus how happy we are that he's around to tell us that God loves us. And when we do that, in the Bible it says that we lay things down at the cross. And the uh, Apostle Paul tells us that. So we're going to take our palm fronds and we're going to go back and lay them at the cross to say thank you to Jesus. And then at your, in your seats you should have a bag of things to color on and you should have some instructions for crafts in there, some scissors and glue sticks. And you guys can make your own palm fronds and at the end of the service you can come forward and leave them here at the altar as a thank you gift to Jesus and, and to show the church how thankful you are. Does that sound good? Oh, I ha there are more in the bags, okay? Thank you. Thank you. Let's put our palm fronds back up there, and then we can go back. I think this text will mean more to us now that we've seen it. So we've seen it. Let us hear it from John's Gospel. The next day, the great crowd that had come to the festival heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, as it was written, do not be afraid, daughter of Zion. Look, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. His disciples did not understand these things at first. But when Jesus was glorified, when they remembered that these things had been written of him and had been done to him. You've heard the ancient story.
Wow. Maybe I died and went to heaven. Thank you, choir and our guest musicians. I hope you can put up with my froggy voice this morning. I don't think I have COVID, but I was on the sofa most of yesterday dealing with whatever this is. I hope the messenger will not get in the way of the message. I've told you so many times how much I love the Bible, love reading the Bible. and Something new comes out every time. I don't know how many times I've read the story of Palm Sunday. I'm 58 years old, been going to church every Sunday of my life, but son of a preacher, uh, son of a, a Southern Baptist pastor. I've been to church every Sunday, every Palm Sunday for 58 years. And something new today, as I read this word, then they remembered. Howard Baker was the ranking minority member of the Senate Watergate Committee and may be best remembered for asking during those never-ending hearings in 1973 and 1974, what did the president know and when did he know it? For some of us, the better question is, what did we forget and when did we forget it? I think there's some uneasy laughter these days about memory loss. Maybe it's just my age, but I hear folks talking nervously and asking their doctor, you know, I'm having a hard time these days remembering names, doc. Is this Alzheimer's? Now, just speaking for my own house, Amy is going to have to find another measure for dementia because I cannot remember thing, anything, and I never have been able to remember anything. I won the Outstanding Freshman Award at Furman and had to go by the administrative office the day after to just pick up the plaque because I forgot the award ceremony. Some outstanding freshman. I never stayed on campus for the weekends because I was home dating you know who, but one of the weekends that I did stay was because I had a Sunday afternoon band concert. That morning at church, however, I was with friends and we got invited to lunch. Our host was affluent and had traveled the world on hunting expeditions. We excitedly accepted his invitation so after the meal he could show us all the elk and moose he'd killed in Montana, the antelopes and gazelles and wildebeest from Africa. And then I remembered I have a band concert. Actually, it was I had a band concert. <laughs> I just missed it. Amy sends me to the grocery store for three items and I can't remember one of them. And I can't remember where I put the list that I made to help me remember the three items. But the doctor says mine isn't Alzheimer's, it's just old timer's disease that I've had since I was pretty young. I may be in good company though. The disciples didn't get it because they didn't remember until it was too late. And the scripture says, then they remembered. I am mesmerized by the story of Jesus, infatuated with Christian theology, and I am fascinated in how it all came to be, how it all came together. If you've listened to me at all, you know that I do not believe God laid it all out according to a carefully orchestrated plan from the beginning of time. That's not because I don't believe in God, it's because I believe in human freedom. Not because I don't believe in providence, but because I believe in the laws of physics. Not because I don't believe in divine inspiration, but because I believe in the literary creativity of the gospel writers. I believe the story of Jesus was not a staged script, but a drama of real life. And as the disciples, the church, the gospel writers lived and learned and as they looked back and as they remembered, they wrote, and our theology was born in real time. As they remembered, as insights were gleaned, as they remembered, beliefs were added to the corpus of their understanding of who Jesus was. I think this is how revelation works. So I'm fascinated by the process what did they know and when did they know it? What did they remember and when did they remember it? As I ask it in last year's Easter sermon concerning Peter and the church, what did he believe and when did they believe it? A gospel writer named John says on the day of those momentous events, even with that grand triumphal entry into Jerusalem, 
which began that week of his passion, the disciples still did not understand. They'd been with him for three years, living together, listening to him preach and teach, and they still didn't get it. It was only later, when he was glorified, John says, then they remembered. Interesting. When he was glorified, not then they believed, then they understood, then they remembered. But what does that mean? And when was Jesus glorified? Was it when Jesus was raised up on the cross? Earlier in his narrative, John has Jesus say, When I am lifted up, I will draw all people to myself. And the writer says he said this to indicate the kind of death he would die. Is that when Jesus was glorified? Or was he glorified in the resurrection? Or at the ascension? Or was it one of those post-resurrection appearances? The Apostle Paul named six of them. He says Jesus appeared to Cephas, and then to the twelve, and then to more than 500, and then to James, and then to all the apostles. And last of all, Paul says, in that dramatic Damascus Road experience, which would have been several years after Jesus' death, Paul says, then Jesus appeared to me. When was Jesus glorified? What does that mean? The writer named Luke recalls the sermon Peter gave on the day of Pentecost, which he concludes by saying, therefore know with certainty that God has made him both Lord and Christ. That is our theology. Yes, God made him Lord and Christ, but when? Pushing that moment of glorification even farther down the road, we could look to that group of German scholars who shaped modern biblical scholarship in the 19th century. One of the most consequential, if not controversial, was Rudolf Bultmann, who famously said, Christ was raised into the kerygma, just a fancy word for preaching or teaching. Bultmann, for Bultmann, Jesus was raised, was glorified in the preaching of the church, then and now. Well, the gospel writer named John says, when he was glorified, then they remembered. But since that when has been discussed and debated and interpreted six ways to Sunday, rather than to try to give you an answer to that today, to what that means I want to suggest to you on this Palm Sunday, for this season of Easter, for a 21st century congregation, that we reverse the phrase and say, when we remember, then he will be glorified. When we remember, then he will be glorified. The sermon is really that simple. What I want to say to you today is simply that we need to remember. We must remember. Engraved on the walls of the Holocaust Museum are the words that our Jewish friends keep reminding us, especially today with anti-Semitism frightfully rising across the country and the globe. Those engraved words say, never forget. The word is essential to faith. Remember. We must remember first by knowing the story which we learn best of all by reading the Bible for ourselves. How often do you read the Bible for yourself? We must remember by teaching the story to our children, boys and girls, here and at home. You need to let Micah teach you the story of Jesus with songs and crafts and games. You need to know the stories of the Bible. And youth, here and at home. I keep telling you that you need to know the Bible to pass any college-level course in Western literature. Allusions to biblical stories are scattered across our literary tradition. You really need to know the stories of the Bible to understand Western literature. And, young people, you need to know because our church and the church rest on your shoulders. If you do not know the story of Jesus, if you young people cannot remember it for yourselves and for your children, the church will not survive beyond the current generation. They say the church is always one generation from extinction. Seems that that adage is truer today than it has been. 
with the decline of the church if our young people do not know the story, remember the story. If they are not determined to teach it to their children, we will not have youth group when you have children. It's up to you to be able to remember. We need to remember the story by singing the theology in good hymns and anthems. We need to remember by enacting the drama of the Easter season from Palm Sunday, waving the palms, to Maundy Thursday, communion, to Easter Sunday, fanfares. We must remember. The church must help a modern culture remember because Jesus changed the world. Simply put, Jesus changed the world. And the movement of that grand story of our theology from creation to incarnation to redemption, the movement of that story may be the only truth that can still change our world. The story of Jesus lifts the fallen and heals the broken. It gives sight to the blind and makes the lame walk. I have no doubt about that. It challenges the structures of power and offers a vision of self-giving love. Without the way of Jesus, the narrative of war, which we are seeing played out in such dramatic ways on our television screens, the narrative of war, our addiction to violence, and the lust for power will spell our certain destruction. We need to remember Jesus. I don't know what John meant when he said, when Jesus was glorified. It's probably not important to understand. What I know for sure is that when we remember Jesus, when the church can rightly remember the story, we will be changed. Then they remembered. Let us be so faithful. May it be so. Let us pray. Gracious God, we pray this day for those whose minds have grown dim and memory has faded. With each day, another memory lost. How devastating this must be to not remember so many milestone occasions that would bring so much joy. How frustrating it must be for those who cannot call a name to a face or to know that you're supposed to recognize a face and it is simply blank in the memory bank of one's mind. Remember? Oh, how they would love to remember. So this day, O oh God, bring them your comfort and care that they may feel safe and secure when each day moves them farther and farther from the memories that make them who they are. We pray this day for those who give care to those whose minds are growing dim and memory is fading. It is a large task that requires patience and patience and then more patience as they have to repeat instructions and listen to the same things told to them over and over and over again. Grant to them your patience and your strength that they will need to be in that role of caregiver. For those who see through a mirror more dimly than others, we hope and trust that one day they will see clearly, face to face, and recognize all that brings hope and joy. Until then, wrap them in your loving care and blessing. And we pray this day for those whose memories are more filled with regret than contentment, for those whose memories are more filled with trauma than happiness, for those whose memories are more filled with abuse than care, for those whose memories are more filled with sadness than joy, for those whose memories are more filled with guilt angst, failure, shame, tragedy, and despair than with hope, peace, joy, and love. Gracious God, pour your love into these who suffer today. And may every day moving forward 
Help them to experience your grace and your goodness. That new memories out ahead may be made that will give them an abundance of life that you hope for all of us. We pray this in the name of Christ. Amen. Remember better together. You can help me remember the things I forget. I can help you remember the things that you forget. And so if you would like to join with this community of faith this day so that we can better help one another remember together, we welcome you as we sing our hymn of commitment.
please be seated. Just a word of thanks to all the musicians today, uh, to um, Christine, to Susan, to Bob, to the choir, and Matthew. Oh, welcome home, Matthew. No, welcome home. <laughs> so good. It's so good. Um, and we look forward to Matthew being with us again next week. Um, Eon is coming. Exactly when we do not know, for immigration is a struggle. But he is coming, we promise, and he promises. Um, He's so now saying second Sunday. Second He's Sunday. And second Bob Sunday has said, I will stay. And Matthew, I think, has been recruited, and the choir's just holding down the fort, waiting on Eon to get here uh, and begin a good work among us. So thank you, though, to all the musicians today. It really does help us launch ourselves into this Holy Week that we might remember <laughs> together this story of Jesus and be changed by it. The final word is not ours, but the Lord. So hear this good word of benediction as we go. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and may God be gracious to you. May God give you grace this day to love with all your heart. That you might do justice. To love with all your soul. That you might show mercy. To love with all your mind. That you might walk humbly with your God. As you go into the world this day, dear friends, love the Lord your God with all your strength. And love your neighbor as yourself.